Okay guys, so we're going to go ahead and start here. I think that we got this information down last time, but just in case you didn't, I want to make sure you have it in your notes. Okay, so class Anthozella is our third class in the phylum Nidaria. And the name breaks down to mean flower animal. So when you look at the word, antho means flower and zilla means animal. In this group, we have organisms that are pretty similar to each other in structure. We have our corals, and those can kind of be broken down into our stony and our soft corals. And we also have our sea anemones, which you see pictured here. One thing that is kind of simple about this group is they can only be found in the polyp form. So I can safely say that there is never a Medusa stage in this life cycle. Coral is a colonial animal. So if you remember, that means that's one organism made up of several individuals. And even though the individuals look like they could be separate, they never are. Um, you can't actually physically separate them without that part of the organism dying. We talked about this last time too, but I didn't actually show you a picture. So when we say what supports the coral or sea anemone's body, um, it's hydrostatic, meaning it's fluid under pressure. But corals have a skeletal structure made of calcium carbonate. And they make this from the compounds from ocean water. Up close, the structure should look like what you see pictured here. So if you didn't see this under the scope, you might just not have been looking at the right coral. But every single one of those star-shaped openings is where a polyp would have come out when it was alive. Mutualism is a really common symbiosis type in this group. So if you look at the two pictures here, um, coral actually has algae that lives in its tissues. It gives it its color, and the algae photosynthesizes um, just like it did in the upside down jellyfish and the green hydra. And you want to make sure you write that down. So the coral get uh, the photosynthetic products from algae, and the algae gets a safe place to live and it's protected. And the coral relies on the algae greatly, so much so that if it loses it, uh, it'll probably die relatively shortly after it loses that coral, and, I'm sorry, that algae, and that definitely can happen. In this group, mutualism is common in other organisms as well, so we just looked at coral. But if you look on the picture on the right, that's a green sea anemone. Green because it has algae living in its tissue. So again, we see that photosynthetic relationship. And on the left, that little clownfish like Finding Nemo, that really is true. So the clownfish will live in the sea anemone's tentacles and get protection. The sea anemone... Um, is protected in turn by the clownfish and get some organs, get some uh, nutrients from its waste and things like that. So make sure that you're writing those examples down in your notebook, not just uh, mutualism is common. Coral reefs. Um, coral reefs are made from obviously the coral animal, but they're built on and built on and built on over thousands of years. The picture that's kind of orange shows what those polyps look like up close. And then the picture that's colorful kind of gives you an idea of what a coral reef is like. The coral reef um, is really a vital ecosystem. Lots of fish feed on coral. Lots of fish live inside coral and sponges and things that live on the reef. Um, and it's one that's actually greatly threatened by human activities. So pollution, um, just being a tourist in the area and not being respectful of the organism and breaking it and taking it. We've really done a lot of damage to these reefs and they're really, really vital for the health of our um, waters.